uh, Mr. Hennessy here and just see if he's, uh, I'm going to mute this. There's another cat. Hey, here we uh. are. Oh, there you go. I was going to jump. There's some, there was some news story about a, a, some commission meeting somewhere in the country where one of the guys was drunk and, um, and he, he held up his cat like that and then threw the cat across the room. Oh, nice. Oh, and then like, and then, then took a swig of a beer. Uh, no. It was his last meeting then. <laughs> what? That was his last meeting. That's yeah, it, actually, I think he quit. Yeah, we did this thing where everybody had to hold their pet up. And I said to him, I was like, you know how your pet starts to look like you after a while? And then I held this up. I <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I think um, Mr. Hennessy is on. There he is. Excellent. So I think we have everybody. Uh, pro properly at 7 I know it's not going to be. But uh, I really want to get it done. So. Get this thing done. Um, so, um, just with opening remarks. Um, this meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Department, RMLD Board of Commissioners, is being recorded via Zoom for distribution to the community television stations in Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Smithfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair. And on item, excuse me for a second, let me get uh, this out of the way so I can get back to my, my uh, view here. Uh, back to me, sorry about that. Um, discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. Uh, Phil, would you be the board secretary, please? Yes, yes, I'm the secretary. I, I know you are. <laughs> I still have to, I feel like I have to ask you. Um, okay. For a public comment um, from the uh, Citizens Advisory Board, uh, George, would you care to make a comment? Um, actually, I'm, Vivek is the one that's overseeing this meeting tonight. I just jumped in. I wanted to see how uh, everything was going to go. Okay. I know that after you guys... Uh, Take your vote tonight. That's recommendations coming to the CAB. So we'll be looking at that, correct? Well, we're not going to be taking a vote tonight. This is for discussion purposes only. We're hoping to uh, uh, take a vote and with a motion on uh, our May meeting. Okay, good, good. Yeah, no, so I just want to see how it's going to go. Uh, just offer some of my opinions. Uh, we've had a lot of information provided by different reports uh, from the GMs. So I think. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just want to be Good. interested to see how it goes tonight. Excellent. Uh, Vivek, would you care to comment? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, I, I like the fact that the Board of Commissioners are moving this matter forward and you want to bring closure to it. And I think you've had a lot of input. You, you got input from us even at the last meeting. So there's nothing new to add to that. It's good to just see. Uh, just from my perspective, the combined numbers above and below the line so that they get a complete picture. That's all. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, the liaisons, um, Karen or Vanessa, would you care to make a comment? Hi, John. Thanks. Uh, Vanessa Alvarado here from the select board. John, I just wanted to say thank you for, for joining us at our meeting um last night where we talked about the pavement it's nice to see familiar faces there it, it, so thanks was, for it was my pleasure thank you very much for inviting me i um i, I very much enjoyed the meeting and, and hearing about actually hearing from most of the media about all the uh, covid 19 responses uh from the town and from the state uh it was very very impressive um and if there's any public comment i don't know that we have anyone from the public on site if not, we'll move forward. Uh, the, in, the intent of the meeting tonight was really to discuss the proposed approach. And let me just do, give a, just a little bit of background quickly. And we've been using a prior methodology, as we all know, using the CPI that had been used for many years. 
uh, we just felt it was no longer appropriate. We'll talk about why in just a minute. Uh, but basically, as kilowatt hour consumption had been declining due to many factors, uh, including milder weather, use of energy saving devices, um, more efficient computers, LEDs, et cetera. And at the same time, the RMLD has fixed costs, which are increasing. And for us, we had to do something to be able to provide, continue to provide the outstanding uh, maintenance and service to our four towns. Um, in addition, uh, over the past few years, we found that the maintenance of the electrical system required significant new investment in capital transformers, rewiring circuits, additional metering, updating of equipment, basically items that hadn't been addressed for a long time, including the need for a new, very expensive substation. Thus, declining revenue, increased costs, and a formula that continually increased the payment to the town of Reading, irrespective of external conditions, just didn't make sense anymore. So we've been, the RMLD Board of Commissioners has been wrestling with how best to meet the needs of our various constituencies, including all of our customers in all four towns we serve, uh, represented by the Citizens Advisory Board, the town of Reading itself, uh, and the staff and employees of the RMLD. We've examined and presented multiple approaches as to how to meet diverse requests. And I believe we're very close. And I hope that um, with the methodology we're going to talk about tonight, uh, this will accomplish it. We've tried to keep our compromises to a minimum, but as I mentioned before, in, in, in my professional career of you know, 40 plus years, I've usually found that the best approach requires compromise for the better good of the enterprise. So that being said, uh, what I'd like to do is if Wendy could perhaps, um, there, there, there are two items that we're going to discuss. One is the, um, um, we would propose to extend the payment that's due to um, the last payments due to stop in our present uh, motion on 731-2021. And if the proposal is to move that to the last payment to an additional payment to 1231-2021 so that the town of Reading um, basically picks up another uh, six month window uh, as well as brings everybody on to the same uh, current year. Um, could we have any, is there any discussion about doing that? Or? All right, that makes a lot of sense. So basically go to the calendar. So any calculations going forward about the payment to the town will be on a calendar year basis, John? That's what you're That's saying? Correct. Seems to make sense. Colleen, any comment? Oh, you got your mute on, Colleen. No, I don't have any comment. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, that, that's, that's the first piece of what we're proposing. The second piece is what you see on the screen here. And um, the approach that we're proposing is really using kilowatt hour consumption as the purest form of measurement. In other words, it's not revenue, it's not cost of goods sold, it's not of anything that it could be changed or manipulated in any given way. It's basically the fundamental element from which all other of our financials are derived. And we track it down to the, the last you know, kilowatt, probably minute as opposed to hour. So it's a very pure uh, thing to kind of look at and we know exactly what it is and how it's being distributed amongst the four towns. Mr. Chair? Yes, please go ahead. Can I just ask one question? Sorry, I was muted there. Um, my question is looking at the chart, I know, and it's a very simple question. Uh, we were looking at the mills there, it was 3.75 and now we've gone to 3.875, not that, I mean, how did, how did we determine that change, do you know? Um, um, go ahead. Um, yeah, George, the, there had been a, two sets of numbers proposed back in March. Yeah. It was 3.75 and one was four. Right. Thing you see here is rather than pick one or the other, is cut it down the middle. So, yes, it, there had been a 3.75, but at the same time, there had also been a four out there. That was just for my own information, please. Thanks. Okay. 
So the approach that's uh, being suggested here is that we take a three, three year weighted average of kilowatt hour consumption um, and multiply it by this variable, you know, the mills per kilowatt hour. And the three year rolling average um, is a technique that's used to uh, modify any kind of um, disturbance to the system, if you will. If it were uh, a, um, whether it's the COVID, whether it's a decrease in any given particular year, whether some untoward event happens, when you begin taking a three-year average with some of these large numbers, you find that it gets smoothed out over, over time. And it can be smoothed out uh, typically in a, either a, a, a positive way or a negative way, whichever way it happens, uh, you don't feel the full impact of it in any given year. And we're, the reason we, we projected this uh, chart tonight is to allow us to show you what could happen, uh, what might happen um, if we were to change some of the variables uh, in terms of moving forward. So if we focus in on, let's say calendar year, uh, 20 um, on the, in the uh, above, in the very top chart and calendar year 21, we see that the payment basically to the town is what it has been. It's 2.48 million and change, correct? Everyone see that? So this top chart says, well, if everything, if the kilowatt hour sales remain constant moving forward from CY uh, calendar year 22 through calendar year 26, mm -hmm. and there's no changes, what will happen as this ripples through and the effect of the 3.875 becomes um, felt, that in the fifth year, the payment would move up to 2.54 million. And the cumulative, if you look to the right, where it says cumulative gain loss, this adds up the difference between what we were paying at 2.48 and through the through all, way, through all the years up to 2.5. So the town would pick up over five years an additional you know, two, $260,000. That's if everything remains stable. It looks like, is that 300,000, John? I'm sorry, it's, oh, is, is it 300,000? I can't quite see it. Yeah. 298, oh yeah, 290, 298, thank you very much. Yes, my, <laughs> my eyes are going along with everything else. So John, just to clarify, this is, uh, so this is us selling the same amount of electricity every year. This is what this is saying. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So under, we, that is, under that scenario. Yeah. In that scenario. The two scenarios on the bottom uh, were, were formulated, we'll deal with the one on the left first, uh, to say, well, what, what if uh, other things happened? Well, for example, let's assume that, um, uh, that the kilowatt hours uh, increased by 1% per year. And so that's what this little multiplier is, that X equals minus one. We can change that and it ripples through this entire chart. So if indeed we had a 1% increase as a function of economic development, let's say, across the various towns. Or uh, electric cars. Or electric cars, absolutely. Perfect example. When and if electric cars are start coming in, it's going to be a major factor in terms of our sales. And, and I need to, to stress this is one of the variables that we don't really have a good handle on. Uh, you know, the weather, we can't control that. We can't predict what that's going to be. So please don't use these charts as a predictor. Use it as a, this is what could happen if things fell in these kinds of tanks and where that might go. So again, if it, we had a plus 1% increase over these five years, the cumulative payment to the town over this time would be if someone could read that for me, I can barely see it. Uh, 631,811. Thank you. So there's the upside at a 1% increase. Let's try a 1% decrease since everybody likes to go, you know, what's the, what is it sort of the, uh, the rails, I think was the term that was used uh, earlier. So a 1% decrease over those entire five years would be a loss to the town cumulative over five years of $127,000. Now that's on top of two point what? 2.48 million, right? So we're talking about approximately 5% over five years. And I wish, I wish my 
I could read into my, my own investments over that period of time and only get a 5% loss over five years when, when the COVID has uh, you know, knocked the socks out of the stock market in one year. And John, one quick thing, uh, you might be getting to this, but the other thing that'll be happening is we project that the above the line payment will be going up in all scenarios because of the capital investments that are being made. So all of these discussions are only about the below, below the line that's the correct. The line will be going up. So even if there's a loss on the below the line, if it happened, it would be, it, it appears that it will be more than compensated for in this scenario by the above the line. Exactly right. We'll show the above the line in just a minute, but I wanted just to focus in on the below the line first, because that's the largest component and has the most variables. So we're all concerned about COVID-19, correct? Uh, and it's not just COVID-19, it's the, we had the mildest winter ever this last winter, which has a huge effect in terms of what happens to us uh, at the RMLD and our payment to the town, uh, as well as the electrification, the LED bulbs, et cetera, that are being used. So what we tried to do in this next chart on the, on the right-hand side is to say uh, in calendar year 20, that's this year, let's say we have an 8% drop you know, terrible, right? We've been talking about half a percent or 1% that we've been experiencing at most. Now, because of all these different factors, we're saying, let's make it 8%. And by the way, from that point moving forward, in calendar year 21, we're back to business as usual. That's not, an 8% is not going to last. We've never seen it last in our history, anything that dire year over year. So we're going to get back, but we're going to still include a minus, or let's say a uh, yes, a plus 1%. So we increase the economics of the town, et cetera. And you can see the cumulative number, which is what we should be focused on at the bottom of that chart. If one, someone could read that for me. 11,868. Right. So if we have economic development, which increases this by 1%, and we still have an 8% drop in 2020, we make up for it over a five-year period of time. And I would argue that $11,000 on top of 2.4 million is lost in the noise. We're basically business as usual. Now, if we'd like to go dire, let's go to a um, minus 1% on this X factor. There we go. And if you would read that down below, it's a 200,000. 209,803. So even with the COVID uh, weather, et cetera, 8% hit and a negative 1% per year over five years, it's a $200,000 uh, hit. Again, you know, on top of 2.4 million, uh, only a 10% piece of that. That's as if absolutely everything goes wrong. And I don't think any of us here ever plan our future with, anything, with everything going wrong over a five-year period of time. Because what happens is you see it coming and you do something about it and you make some changes, right? You change your direction. You don't just sit there and wait for it to happen. So in any event, what I'm trying to, to show here is that I think we're in pretty good shape with this type of a rolling average and with the numbers that we've used in terms of mills per uh, kilowatt hour to kind of get to a place that people can feel comfortable about. Everyone's made compromises in, in pulling this kind of chart together. So with, with just, just that in mind, do we have any questions from anyone? This is an open discussion. To, to deal with this, and then we'll move on to the above the line. If not, could we go to the above the line, Wendy? Give me a second here. Sorry, John, one, one quick question. Sure, Bob. Uh, the only thing is if, if, if has anybody asked, I, and I understand your reasoning on the third chart that we looked at, the bottom numbers were different. The chart two and chart three had different sets of numbers. If yes, those, they did. Yeah. So even if they were the same, there's only a, a minuscule difference between the two numbers. If you maintain the same numbers, I, I could see somebody asking that question. Why did you change the, the numbers on from chart two to chart three? If you had kept them the same, what did the number look like? And just rounding, I think you're, you're only talking maybe $11,000 or, or, or maybe it's, it's a minuscule number right. if they were the same. Well, Wendy, can we go back to those charts, please? And Bob, if I understand what you're saying, uh, if we put uh, zero in where the X equals zero on both of them, 
Or no, it's actually it, it, so. So if I was in the lower part of the chart, chart three, the third chart, right? We go to we go to year 22, 23, 24, 5, 6. Right. Those numbers are are slightly different. They're, they showed the growth, right? Someone might, you know, what when we talk about that, why, it, you know, if you look at it, if you just plug the numbers in from the chart on the left to the chart on the right, and, you know, I, I could see that being a question. Right? Yeah, there, it's, this is actually the same chart. We've just duplicated the chart. And, and you just changed the variable on the, on the yeah, the one on the one on the left, we're saying, let's forget about COVID-19 and any uh, pandemic or untoward event or a mild winter, super mild winter. Let's just deal with like economic development. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a minus one, plus one, minus 0 0.05, plus 0 0.05, just to see what the impact would be if, if without the overlay of the major factors of a winter or pandemic or huge reduction in terms of energy usage. We repeated the chart on the right. It's actually the same number. It's in the, in the uh, calendar year 18, 19, 20, and 21. And then what we said was, let's layer in, in, in calendar year 20, this 8% hit for us, and then do the same thing. We can either increase economic development or decrease economic development. And I, the okay. reason I did that was because I wanted you to see, without changing a large number of variables at one time, we're trying to keep it really pretty straightforward. Yep. And by the way, we'll send these out to anybody who requests them. So yeah. you can- That's, you that's can what I, John, them. this is Phil. I, I would like, you know, I see this as a uh, Excel spreadsheet. So be, you know, if you, if uh, at some point somebody could email me the spreadsheet itself, I'd like to kind of play with it. Oh, absolutely. With variable. That's yeah. exactly what we'd like to do. All right, anybody yeah. who would like to take this, play with it, put in various numbers, please feel, feel free uh, yeah. to do that. This is not a, a motion night. This is a discussion and trying to circulate this to get the best compromise moving forward. Okay. Yeah, the only comment, John, the only comment I would have is if we had a, a real bad emergency, you know, somebody drops an atomic bomb on, on Reading, you know, well, we're all gone anyway, but that's the story. Yeah. We won't need electricity if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Pick pick another metaphor, Phil. Yeah. Pick another yeah. example. Yeah. We have a major ice storm like they did out on Wood. There we go. You know? there we go. There there you go. go. I feel safer now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I you, you know, know the I, um, I, when you get this, you can you can layer that in in terms of what you think that might be, and I'm almost yeah. I'm almost going to guarantee that this three three year rolling average is going to smooth that out uh, in such a way that it, it's not going to impact us. You have, you have to believe that we're going to come out of on any given years. The, the ice storm's not gonna last two years in a row or three years in a row. That's not the way it works. Um, but mm -hmm. seriously, I would like anyone to, to play with these. That's the reason we created them uh, so that you can see what the impact would be. And if you have suggestions about how we could mitigate any of those or change the formula, happy to consider them. Can I, I can I ask a question about Phil's question? Please go ahead. Are you are you saying that if there's a bad ice storm, it reduces kilowatt hour sales for that year? I think what would happen in a case like that would be that the system has to be all rebuilt at that point, and but that would potentially affect hours. the bottom line. Yeah, but that's different than kilowatt hour sales. The the payment here is 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 calculated by kilowatt hour sales, not by some, you know, well, it would certainly if the system, if the system were down, the kilowatts would be down. I would, I would think. I mean, but the system I mean, wasn't for, yeah, working, for a couple of know? days, right? For a couple of days, um, yeah. or a week, or whatever. Um, Colleen, how long did it take him to rebuild out there in Worcester? Do you know? Do you remember? I, no, Colleen, do you know? Or when there's big ice storms, does it reduce annual kilowatt hour sales noticeably? Uh, usually, they you would take the other uh, substations and, and triangulate the loads and, and, and recover if, it, if you lost a particular section. I mean, yeah, if you had areas of neighborhoods that were out for a long period of time, you'd lose those sales. But, I mean, it was recovered within, I think, an, a couple of months or so. Do you, do you remember, Bob, out in the 495 belt? 
Yeah, <clears throat> from from na national grid perspective, when they hit a storm, if you look at it from even from a week perspective, the amount of customers, your customer base dwindles, but you know gets recovered every day that you're recovering during a storm event, and you know your biggest your biggest challenge is is capital recovery, right? Um, um, which is a different, you know, that would end up being a surcharge on top of everybody's bill if that's right. how, you know, it would come in. So it wouldn't affect kilowatt sales. You talk even, yep. even like two days, like, you know, when you think about one three hundredth of the year for per day. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking. That but, well, I'm curious what Phil, are you, Phil, you're saying, are you worried, like, will RMLD, if there's a major event, would RMLD be able to afford to make the payment to the yeah. town? Is that what you're getting yeah. at? Or... That's what I'm getting at too. Yes, yes. You know, if there was a major event, I mean, would we have the funds available to be able to make the payment? That's that's my concern. Well, here's the uh, the caveat on on all these formulas. Uh, no matter what happens here, uh, we we are charged at the RMLD, separate from the town, uh, to make sure that we can provide electricity uh, to people, no matter what happens. So the caveat on any of these formulas is if there's an untoward event that's large enough to actually get into that kind of territory, then the payment to the town is going to shrink, period. It doesn't make any difference if it's an atom bomb or an ice storm or whatever. We're certainly not going to be making payments to anybody if we have to rebuild the entire system. I mean, I, I'm stretching my imagination to think about how that could possibly happen. Um, but rather than think about the most dire situation um, I, I can only I can only say that in, in that kind of a situation, all bets are off. That's embedded in the formulas. If we have to do that, then all payments to anybody are off. We might be on payments above the line as well. If we need to do that, the health we are state mandated to provide electricity and keep the system operational. I just have a quick question. Um, on the flip side, on the positive side, like for each electric car that gets added, isn't that like adding a house or like adding two houses or something of that magnitude in terms of the amount of electricity that's being purchased? Something of that order. Is it that much, Dave? It's like a house or two, each car? It's like a house. I mean, my, I think my electric load is doubled. Um, wow. But something like that. Colleen, do you know? I mean, or... or uh... Well, we, we talked about, uh, you know, making sure that when the electric vehicles, that's why we we're, we were trying to put that on uh, a time of use rate. That's how we designed our rebate. Because when a car, like if you had a Tesla and you start that up, it can be equivalent to a number of houses. Right. Um, and we don't but, want the transformers to yeah. start uh, going away. So I'm asking, yeah, I, I get that. I'm asking a different question of what it does to sales. Like is, is having another electric car on the system kind of like having another house built in terms of what that car is consuming every year, roughly. I guess what I'm saying is it's intermittent and I would have to probably put together a chart for you to show, to answer your question. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you anecdotally at my house, our car has probably doubled our electricity use all off peak because that's when we charge it. So just in case anybody's wondering what, uh, what one or two electric cars will do, I think it's going to be of the magnitude of adding another housing unit. I, I think you're probably correct. And, and it's in that general mag magnitude. And Dave, thank you for being a true patriot to uh, the RMLD. Well, I'm, I mean, just to, just to, this is in the future. I think we're going to see these. So, okay, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Any other uh, discussion items? If not, could we move to the uh, above the line, uh, Wendy? Um, someone has a noisy mic on. If you would move, mute it, please. Thank you. Uh, the lower chart here is the uh, the above the line uh, payment, and uh, let's see. This is assuming that um, we maintain uh, the kilowatt hour usage. Remember the. The way it's calculated above the line is it's 2% of net plant um, times the uh, percentage that whatever community uh, uses of the, of the uh, total. 
kilowatt hour usage. And so you can see that the numbers here are indeed increasing and it's a function of how much capital, of course, is put into the plan. Right. So our, our intent is to continue putting capital into the plant and that would include all these transformers, all the maintenance, all the rewiring, all the meters, the substation, et cetera, as we move forward. And uh, let's see, we don't, I don't think we have the chart here that says um, uh, if there uh, was an 8% hit in one of the years, what the difference would be, but I think it was calculated out as, out as a $5,000 difference. Okay. So the- Why would, that be, why would it be a $5,000 difference, John? Because we'd have to rebuild and there'd be more capital to go in. We, correct. This, but we, this, thing, we, is, this we thing was set by special legislation, too. I want to make that point. You're, you're absolutely right. set by special legislation from the state. You're, you're absolutely above right. the line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a question of, I think it would be, uh, and, and Colleen, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it would be a question of whether if we move any of the, uh, the capital from one year to the next. That's all. Okay. All right. And it's looking at the 10 year plan, as you can see here. So the intent is not to do that. Um, it can continue to, um, you know, build the rebuild the system or not, well, build the system and maintain the system, obviously. So we felt that there really was no major impact in terms of the above the line uh, payment that would just get added to the below the line uh, payment as it has been. Looks like it continues to go up. It does consistently. It, does the new substation in there, Colleen and Wendy? I'm trying to see. I don't see the big jump up in the net plant numbers. Is it averaged over some time? The net the, uh, the substation. Sorry, I'm going to have to look on that. It is though. It's it's in a it's in a two to three years. Oh, it's averaged in there. Yes. It's, okay. It depends on the year. Year. And when the project starts. Got it. Thanks. Wendy's kind of hard to hear. What, what did you say? Wendy, Wendy, could you speak up, please? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's in there over two to three years because it's based on the um, time of when the project starts and when it's planned to finish because it is uh, a lengthy project. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I expected to see some big, uh, you know, eight figure number bump up in one year, but it's not like that. No, but, because we also have projects going on with it. So it, it's going to take its time. Okay, thanks. And and again, the sort of a you know the rolling average is kind of a a very nice methodology to sort of smooth out these kinds of things. Yep. Um, quite honestly, that's that's all we had to present tonight. And uh, so, if there are any other questions, we'd be happy to. If you'd like to comment, talk about this some more, that's great. But really, it was to just uh, get everyone onto the same page in one session, uh, provide you with the documentation and the spreadsheets so you could do what if analysis on your own and bring it to our May meeting uh, where we can discuss it further. And I would hope that uh, we could do a motion in the May meeting to uh, get closure on the methodology. Uh, John, this is Phil. I got one item yes. that's come up and that is the idea that there'd be some sort of ceiling and some sort of floor in terms of any increase and decrease. I think we should, you know, discuss that at this point. Sure. As to whether or not it would be something we would consider or should be considering. Well, um, let me let me deal with the, uh, the ceiling first. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the ceiling really Im implies that if, uh, let's say electric cars came in 10 times faster than we ever expect which could happen because Volkswagen's dumping internal combustion engines this year. Um, if they came in and we started selling huge amounts of electricity, that means all towns would, would benefit. The kilowatt hour usage would increase dramatically. And why would the town of Reading want a ceiling on this? I mean, wouldn't everybody be, as the phrase I used last night was dancing in the streets, if that would happen? I'd be happy. I think everybody would be happy. Um, okay. Right? Uh, as far as the uh, a cap or, or a, a basement, if you would line, the, the the rationale there would be, we don't want to be in a position per your previous comment of an atom bomb or a huge ice storm occurring, Phil, 
to be locked into a legal payment to the town of Reading when we need to use all available funds to deal with um, whatever that catastrophe might be. And I have no idea what it could be, but we certainly don't want to be in a, in a situation where we have attorneys coming over and going, you owe us this money, please pay it up immediately. And we're going on, no, we're state mandated. We do not have to do that. And by the way, this is a voluntary payment below the line. I need to stress that to everyone, a voluntary payment. But you know, to address that, John. To address that, John. Let me let me go first, Dave. To yeah. address that, John. Yeah. I mean, I think if, if we had a, a major event, I think in any motion that we determine that we put forward, we'd actually have we'd have to create some sort of policy to determine what's a major event, and that all bets are off, like you summarized from before. Yes. I mean, that would seem yeah. to be address that particular situation. Um, you know, I'm still, I'm kind of leaning toward a little bit toward uh, potentially some sort of floor involved. Can I, can I this. throw out something to yes, respond to that, Phil? Yes, go ahead. Phil, what if, what if we don't know, hard to predict the future, what if something happens where people stop buying electric cars and we've noticed over the last few years our sales or kilowatt hour sales have dropped a little bit, one, two percent, looks like it's leveling, but who knows. What if it just sales, kilowatt hour sales just continue to drop by two, three percent a year? And we've put a hard floor on this and our in five, 10 years, our sales are 80, 80% on the dollar. Under that scenario, our MLD would be having to raise rates dramatically to compensate for a locked in floor payment or, you know, a floor payment, right? Thank you, Dave. And let me make one additional comment on top of that. Uh, by statute, we're not allowed to use the other town's rates to subsidize the below the line payment for ready. That's not, I don't know that it's quite like that. Actually it is. Uh, we is sent it? out a memo today. Okay. That states that explicitly. Okay. I, I didn't catch that. I'm, I'm sorry. It was, it was very the correction. No, it's my bad. John, uh, if I may. Please, Vanessa, please go ahead. Thank you. I mean, one of the great things I think that this discussion has demonstrated over the course of, you know, the past year or two is that the select board and the commissioners are willing to work together. I think if we, you know, to Phil's point, if the floor was set and something happened where RMLD was concerned about you, um, about kilowatt hour sales, it is something that could be revisited in the future. It, it doesn't necessarily have to stay hard and fast. So that's an option as well. Thank you. And um, well, let me remind everybody, there's, uh, there's no motion tonight. So um, if uh, individuals would wish to bring um, these types of suggestions to our, our uh, formal meeting in May, uh, and we'll, we'll discuss it there and uh, take a We'll take a vote on whether to include it or not. I mean, it's a, at the end of the day, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. John, one, one quick question on the, yeah, on, the yeah. on the chart on the net plant. You know, as as we're in uh, calendar year twenty right now at eighty six million. Um, as, as the numbers grow up, are, are those in the capital plan? Where, where are those net plant numbers coming from? I I know you said there's a substation built in there. Um, and then you can will speak. you care to answer that? Yeah, Wendy's Wendy's got the number. She can explain it. Is she okay. there? Everything's come. Everything you're seeing on your screen comes from our six-year plan that was um, that is on the website. So okay. all, all the numbers here are directly from the six-year plan and the strategic plan that management has decided. Yeah, Bob. This this plan, if I may, uh, was uh, developed a number of years ago uh, when Colleen first came in. And we, we review that plan every year in terms of updating it, in terms of capital that's needed, et cetera. But uh, uh, again, happy to share that with you. It's about uh, 15 pages wide. <laughs> yeah. but it's a, I think it's a, it's a really, really good plan. We had not had that at the RMLD in any of the previous administrations. So John, this is Vivek. Uh, yes, Vivek. So I, I think to the point that uh, Phil and I think Vanessa were talking about, if 
we are going to publish or if RMLD is going to publish what the plan is, it provides visibility to the town planners as to what RMLD can do. It's the same thing like even setting a floor, right? I mean, if you set a floor or you provide guidance and saying, this is what we are planning to do. So that gives from a planning point, it can give people a sense of what they can plan for. So, and I think what, one of the things that uh, Vanessa, when I was talking to Bob and uh, with the, uh, the town manager, the town administrator, I mean, he, he, you know, I think from a planning point of view, if there is visibility in the plan for the town, that's as good as giving a baseline because you're saying under this scenario, this is what I'm going to do. And if things get bad, then we are saying, you know, all bets are off anyway, right? There's always be that clause. So, right. so from a planning point of view, I think whatever our amenity comes out with is going to provide guidance for the next six years. Yes, thank you, Viv. That's that's really good. That, that's exactly right. Uh, it's providing guidance. What it's not providing is a hard and fast number every year that's going to be paid. It's a formula that we use, no different than the formula we've used in the past. It's just a different formula. And that creates a variable number on any given year. It's a function of winter, you know, uh, COVID, all these other things that kind of work its way into it. Um, so it's, on a, it's a variable number. Because we're running a business, we do not have stability such as let's say the town has in terms of how many houses there are and what the tax rate is for X number of years. That's not us. We are running an, a business that has, it changes every day. I think the idea behind the floor um, to Phil's point earlier was, um, yes, I mean, I think Vivek, your point is, is valid that the transparency um, and the communication certainly is helpful from a town planning perspective. I think um, if we were to experience two significant decreases um, back to back, say a mild winter and say COVID-19, um, the three year average now does would drop the payment a bit. Um, and But it may recover for RMLD in the following year, um, but the town would still be suffering that blow from that decrease. And, and I think that's where the, um, the guardrails that I had mentioned as far as a minimum payment helps insulate the town a little bit from that. Okay, um, any other comments? Um, what, I just have one quick one. Were you gonna say something, Colleen? Well, I was just gonna ask John if I could speak to your comment earlier, Dave. Um, yeah. I was thinking a little bit more. So if uh, for the May meeting, so if an electric vehicle is 30 kilowatt hours for 100 miles, uh, Chuck and I can put together an estimate of how many cars we think. I mean, they didn't come in this October as, as fast as we thought they would for the technology, but we could put together a chart that would show what we think the impact of electric vehicles on cr increasing sales could be over the next six years. And, we, and I can have that chart based on that for May meeting if you'd like me to do that, John. I think it would be instructive, sure. Okay, I will work on that. But that's all I got, Dave. Thirty kilowatt hours for for a hundred miles. Yep. Thank you. That you you read my mind because I was going to ask ask for that. So thanks for volunteering to do that. Of course. The only overall thing I was going to say is that you know the the history is that we you know we had CPI and I think it started at one point five million and went up almost to two point five million over a period of what has it been fifteen years um, of that formula. And I think it's just worth remembering that that kind of you know one million dollar increase is unique in the in the state and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And in terms of light plants, I don't think you you find another one where the payment went up, you know, a million dollars. And I think what this board has worked to do and staff has worked to do is how to preserve that that high magnitude of the payment that employs um, and and make sure it stays there, but now tied to a formula that's more actually relates to what we're doing as a business. And we've worked very hard to do this and, and thank you to the staff and to my colleagues for your efforts. And that's kind of really the highest level of what we've, what we've tried to do here all along. Um, and so these things we're talking about are, 
are tweaks around the margins, but the, and they're good tweaks, but just want to make sure we keep in mind the overall, you know, thing that we've tried to do here. If I can make one other comment, and that's uh, yeah. uh, George and Vivek, uh, could we, yes. uh, are you, I assume the CAB will be meeting prior to our May meeting, is that correct? Yes. Would you, um, would you uh, be able to basically translate that, this, <laughs> what we've showed tonight, and in terms of uh, uh, the numbers and the impact, et cetera, and why we're doing it uh, to the CAB uh, so that they have a good flavor for it? I think it. we have a pretty good handle on it. I mean, Vivek also, yeah. I'm not going to speak for him, but we've been reviewing these as right along. This is nothing new to us. So uh, uh, we will be discussing it, I'm sure. Uh, some of the other things we'll be talking about is the subcommittee and one, you know, how often they should meet. I know it's five years now, but I, I don't think it should be any less than three, more than five. Some, I mean, a few other things we'll discuss. Maybe this bottom, uh, bottom line stuff. But uh, yeah, we'll be discussing this at our next meeting. Good, because we'd certainly like to have that for input. And I'd like to, if you could provide some of that, uh, if you just send over that spreadsheet to me. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I'd appreciate that. Vivek, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, same here. I, I, I just would like to have the same spreadsheet. And, you know, I just look at all the numbers together, show the top the line, you know, above the line, bottom line, below the line, and then just look at the composite. And so one can see what the numbers, the variable, yeah. Because one of my worry was, I think some of the calculations that had been done by the select board had used a slightly different formula for the above the line calculation. And so I think the above the line calculation should be done the way RMLD would do it. I, I think this is the, uh, uh, I'd like to give kudos to the entire board and every, both the CABN and the board of, uh, of commissioners, because I think, and Phil, you can comment on this, I think it's the first time we've had uh, people on the boards who actually wanted the spreadsheets to play with them. <laughs> yeah, can I ask one more question? Uh, other than Vanessa, uh, has the, the board of selectmen seen this or got a hint of any of this? And have they uh, given you any feedback or what their feelings are on it? If, if I may. Yeah, so we actually one. reviewed this uh, at our meeting last night. Um, and I think there was, uh, and we reviewed the previous proposals and, and the various incarnations uh, for the formulas. And last night, I, I think there was a bit of concern um, as far as the lack of a floor for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there was recognition um, of the collaborative effort between the commissioners and the select board. But yes, we have seen it. So thank you. Okay. Hey, if, uh, if there are no more questions, uh, could I get a, a motion for adjournment? So, so moved, Mr. Chair. Yes, Bill? Oh, so moved. Second. 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 Okay. Second. Mr. Stempak, aye. Mr. Pacino, aye. Mr. Talbot, aye. Coulter, aye. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for, for discussing this. I very much appreciate it. Thanks, all. Have Thank a you. Thank you. Nice seeing you guys. Yeah, bye. Good night. Be safe. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.